Looks like it can go faster. Yeah, that's what I'm bumping it up a little bit right now. And come up to 30. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Aloha, Kakahiaka. Little whale shark excitement this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully we got a, at least enough of a video clip to uh, pull some good still images off. I hope so, yeah. There was one close encounter, I think, that you guys had. Yeah, I was having, I grabbed too short of a pole there, so I was having trouble holding it steady. Right. My cine photography skill <laughs> consists of attaching a game trail camera to a tree, turning <laughs> it on and walking away. <laughs> yeah. I see uh, Trevor and Steve <laughs> moving around there. with it on the deck, so <laughs> maybe it's uh, maybe they'll get some decent footage. Text Megan and tell her her head's in the way. Yeah, somebody go tell Megan to. <laughs> I'll do that right now. I think I have my phone on me. Hey. Otherwise, I tilt down. You can tilt down and get a close close up of her. I think she left. No. Nope. <laughs> It must be there if they're trying to video it, yeah? Yeah, probably. I, so. I just, okay, my message just sent. Um, there's a whale shark outside. Are we still going down? Nothing hey, changed? Yeah, nothing Roger. changed. <laughs> still winning the race. Yeah. I can slow it up a bit. All right, so we are about to dive on Argonaut Seamount. We're descending the vehicles down about past 300 meters now on our way to 2,300 meter water depth. So still got a ways to go to get to the bottom. Uh, we're gonna start the dive on sort of the south flank of Argonaut Seamount. It's it's a uh, really elongated seamount, uh, not very high relief. Oh, there he is. Um, running more than 10 kilometers sort of north to south. And we're gonna dive on the south end and proceed up the slope. Uh, only covering about 300 meters uh, in uh, in ascent as we go up to the wow. crest of Argonaut Seamount. So it should be about a 16-hour dive. We'll cover the vehicles around midnight tonight. Um, we've transited overnight to the uh, eastern flank or the uh, or eastern uh, fork or, or right fork of the Lilikalani Ridge. So we're looking forward to continuing our dives on this side. Uh, we spent most of the expedition so far on the um, either on the uh, western fork or 
or up near the junction. And uh, now we finally made it back to the to the eastern fork. So looking forward to seeing these dives and comparing and contrasting to our observations before. Um, scientist ashore, Chris Kelly, who uh, was key in, in picking these dive sites for us, is pretty excited about this one. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing what sort of animal animal diversity that we, f we find on the seamount. So that's what we'll be up to today. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Are we ready to introduce ourselves? Oh, look, there's a whale shark again. Hello. Oh, wow. Oh. Beautiful. Satellite V3. You might That's need so to look cool. at it on the quad view. I know we've been experiencing a little bit of satellite problems. Um, so the quad view might be helpful if the other view is black. <coughs> and you can see everybody sticking the, <laughs> the GoPro yeah. down into the water trying it to get the like shot. It looks like we've added to the pole. We did, yeah, <laughs> we extended it. <laughs> it was a very uh, MacGyver extension. Duct tape and tie wraps. That was a whale shark. You can see them madly trying to get the shot. <laughs> it's so funny. See them scramble around. What I love is, is the boat crew is almost as excited as everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if Pavel was here. <laughs> Come a little bit faster, there, Paul. Well, that is pretty exciting. We haven't seen too much uh, uh, surface to marine life no, or charismatic megafauna on this, uh, other than what's on the seafloor. <laughs> we haven't seen much on the surface. Yeah. Mostly birds. Lots of awesome birds. And one mahi-mahi. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we saw flying mahi-mahis the other day, myself and Justin. That was like at the beginning of this cruise, though. We saw the that flying cool. mahi-mahis. Are they going after the flying fish? I don't... I think they were going after the flying fish, but then we uh -huh. have a reason to believe that they were running away from something if yeah. they were... Oh. If they were able, so they to, were jumping get, out of the water. They were jumping out of the so water. It's wow. my first time I've ever seen. That's pretty cool. They're like big fish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good eating fish too. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your favorite way to eat mahi mahi? Grilled. Ooh. How you like them, yeah. people? All kind, any kind. <laughs> In my stomach, that yeah. Kind. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we don't usually go swimming off of the boat, and um, I think that's just the rules, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. It's not allowed. Ever since that shark attack. Oh. It's funny, whenever whenever people pop out of the, the holds or the hatches, it's I feel like they're like a lemur that, <laughs> that's peekabooing out. <laughs> Like whack a mole. <laughs> good. Uh, bump it up to 30 there if you want. Sounds good. I'm I'm really proud and kind of surprised and a little bit shocked all at once. We have about 11 um, ship to shore interactions with schools from all over. I know we have a handful of schools from the continental U uh, USA. We have one from the UK and we have a couple from Hawaii too. Yeah, 11, 11 interactions. Yeah, that's that, amazing. That's, that's a lot. I mean, today specifically? Today, wow! Uh, within this day, yeah. Um, I know it started at 2:30 in the morning. Um, I I woke up and wanted to help out Shelby and then 
she's like, what are you doing here? You need to sleep. You have watch in the morning. And I'm like, you don't have to tell me twice. I'll go <laughs> back to sleep. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, the pole, there is a camera off the end of the pole that we were watching those guys. Um, we are currently at 500 meters and continuing to descend to um, 2,300 meters, I believe. Oh, yeah. Twenty-seven point three stone of rocks. What's how do you weigh it? What does a stone equivalent weigh? Weighing mean? stones. Twelve point stone. five pounds. How many? About twelve and a half pounds. Twelve and a half pounds. Or somewhere around there. Right. There's some kilos. kind of kilos. Inside joke with that. So I was in the data lab, kind of doing my work last night. And um, Diane was sitting behind me, and then Val walks in and is trying to create a. Um, they're trying to make a little sabotage plan for Leela because she doesn't like it when they say, "Look at the green stuff." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they're like, "We need to make a. We need to make a wish list of just green stuff for Leela and put it in front of her, and then just really pull on her leg like that way." And then the next thing was. She was just laughing hysterically about her ability to weigh it in stone. And she remembers another um, cruise where they um, they compared it to the w to the weight of um, Mini Coopers. Oh. <laughs> 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 Pretty soon we'll have a Mini Coopers worth of stone, <laughs> worth of rocks. <laughs> yeah. Crap valve on. Yeah, I turn it on. On. It's uh, the um, there's a guard on the camera there. I guess uh, now it's no, our watch to do uh, is on the descents on and Atlanta. ascents. So we'll be only getting half half bottom time on our watches this morning and tonight. Yeah, we've been lucky for a while now. Yeah, T totally lucky. Are we the launch and recovery today? We are, yeah. Cool. I think it was Trevor's watch last couple dives. So we're back to being the delivery deliverers. Now, what was our? The descenders. The descenders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Kind of shuffles around. You get to be the delivery team, then you get to be the pit crew for a while. Mm -hmm. And we've also been the fix it crew. Yep. Or the maintenance team. It's nice when it rotates around, so mm. kind of breaks up the expedition a bit. Share the load. Hmm. I wonder if eleven is um, eleven in one day is a new record for the number of ship to shore interactions in the um, in the day of Nautilus. I'm gonna ask Megan. I I want to know too a good note. It's the record for this expedition, right? Definitely. Yeah. This expedition, that is the record. That's the one that matters, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, how noticeable is the boat movement from the control roof fan? <laughs> what was that? How You know how the ship rocks from side to side? How noticeable is that for you. I feel like it's relative. Everyone yeah. has their own feeling of how much the boat moves versus not so much. Yeah, it totally depends. It's uh, very noticeable up here, and we get used to uh, feeling that because that translates to uh, camera motion up and down for us. Mm. And there's... Uh, not necessarily with this vehicle, but other vehicles where you're docking one vehicle to the other, you have to uh, time it so you're on the on the upheave. So yeah, you get used to being aware of it, or if you're 
uh, in our case, if we're down low with uh, Atlanta and we feel those big rolls coming through, our first instinct is to pull up. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it, I see Paul doing it now. A big roll comes through and he just automatically reaches for the winch and starts coming in. God, but I what's don't even the know that I do it. That's uh, just. <laughs> have you figured out like what the delay per hundred meters is though? If you when the but let's say the boat heaves two meters, at what point does Atlanta or Argus heave two meters? It's pretty pretty pretty, soon. pretty quick. Yeah, it's pretty much real time. The only time there's a delay is when uh, you know once in a while, especially with Atlanta, you'll see the camera tilt. Yeah where it's, it's actually getting stuck in the wire, but that's usually an extreme case. That happens uh, in particular if we're paying out too fast during weather. It'll, uh, the payout combined with the... The whale shark's off to the side of the ship again. Mm -hmm. Whale shark, whale shark, whale shark. Oh, there's one of our, there's the chief engineer walking around looking, looking. I love, I love the enthusiasm from the crew. Whenever I see them, they seem very not interested in things. <laughs> I feel like working hard is, is a lot to deal with on the ship. Yeah. They've all been on here since uh, February. Some of them longer than that. Definitely. It's another day on the boat for them. <laughs> they have been uh, coming out to give the crane a really good once over after every launch and recovery. Yeah, they're out, they're working over there right now. <laughs> the long pole. <laughs> the long pole. Is what it is that called? Longer yet? Is that what is, is that the word of that? Is that the javelin? Like a, is is that a is that the sport where you like run with a pole oh. and then you stick it in the pole ground ball. and you got to jump? Pole ball. Oh, that's pole pole ball. Ball. Javelin, you're throwing this. Thing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and then there's the joust. <laughs> a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting this up, but it's funny. Stephen's just kind of walking back. <laughs> and, back and, <laughs> and he knows he's, he, that I'm following him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can we see the whale shark, too, please? Okay. If, if it comes if it, on. If it comes back up. Oh, oh there he is. Here he is. He's coming on in just a sec. Um, satellite feed three. Put him on uh, big screen up there. On there too, if you it. want. Hello, whale shark. Oh wow, they're gonna get good footage of that. Oh I bet my. Steve's gonna get some great shots of it. Yeah. It, it, it's almost like, hey, watch! I can make a long run from over here to over there <laughs> to over here to yeah. over there. I wonder if it's laughing at us running yeah, back yeah, and forth. Yeah. <laughs> hey, watch! Now they're all gonna run back over here. <clears throat> and then the pole camera is now ascending. <laughs> They know we're watching. Some great blue water entertainment. <laughs> That's a lot of trust. Looks like it's, you guys, did you guys use like duct tape and uh, zip ties? <laughs> yeah, how'd you fix that GoPro to the tip, Dan? Tie wraps and uh, electrical tape. Yep.
All right, and I have a question for you. Sure. So, you know that uh, green and white flag on the table in our room? E yes. What? Is there some significance to that flag? To I don't know. It's not mine. Uh, green and white flag. I'm trying to even think I, of. I thought it was yours. It appeared the same day uh, all the, uh, everyone moved on to the boat. Huh. No. <laughs> Interesting. I keep meaning to ask you about it, and I didn't want to pry, and then... One of the crew made a comment yesterday, one of the ROV team, that mm. about that flag, and I got to thinking, oh, maybe it's not right. <laughs> it's not mine, no. Wonder where it came from. What's that? I wonder where it came from. I think uh, one of the ROV team is interested to see how long we'll leave it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Strategically placed it there. Uh, during crew change. Who was in the room before Ryan? Was it? Who was, yeah, who was there before? Whale shark. Well, I've been, I've been in that room for a while now and it wasn't, it wasn't there, so. Oh, but who was your cabin mate before? Um, I can't remember now, so last expedition. Purge that memory. Those, those files have been stored in the archive. Yeah. Uh, long term, uh, it's how we store uh, the stuff. Yeah. Here. Question: um, How much does the cable weigh, and when it's fully extended to the sea floor, does it have an impact on the ship's maneuvering? Sorry, I have to repeat that one. <coughs> Let's see. Uh, cable and ship and sea floor. How much does the cable weigh, and when it's fully extended to the seafloor, does it have an impact on the ship's maneuverability? It's about a kilogram per meter. So, sorry for switch hitting here. <coughs> when we're at 3,000 meters, we have about 10,000 pounds hanging off the uh, overboarding sheet on the A-frame. Six of which is going to be the cable. Yeah. And the uh, deeper we go, the uh, less we have to worry about the uh, fleet angle of the cable. So when it's deep, uh, Sakato will tell you that it's, if it's, you know, 100, 200 meter layback at 3,000 meters, you can figure out what the angle of the cable is. It's only a couple degrees. But when it's shallow, that same uh, layback will be more of an acute angle. So uh, we have to worry about ship maneuverability, especially if we're coming aft or if there's excessive currents, uh, more so when we're shallow, in particular at launch recovery. Uh, but when we're deep, it's not much of a concern. The uh, trade-off there is when we're deep, it takes a long time for the pendulum effect to, uh, for it to swing, for Atlanta to swing back under the vessel. So typically at 3,000 meters, it's somewhere, depending on the current, between 5 and 10 minutes, we move the vessel before Atlanta uh, starts to swing back under the vessel. Which gets really challenging when we're trying to keep Atlanta 20 meters off the cliff and then uh, follow the follow the feature along, so uh, Hercules can stay on the cliff. That's when uh, Argus and uh, Nav are really have their hands full. You kind of have to uh, use the force a little bit because our bathymetry maps are depending on the, on the depth. Uh, 25 meter resolution, which is effectively our uh, excursion distance between Atlanta and Hercules. So we get the major, you know, mountains and sea mountains show up 
beautifully on the uh, from the mapping, but we don't see the local features until we're actually there. We kind of have to. We can see out about 100 meters on Atlantis sonar and 50 meters on Hercules, but depending on the terrain and and how the uh, how steep the hill is, you know, often the sonar is just returning the cliff face. So we kind of get the, we can see, you know, 25, 50 meters, which way the cliff is going. So we're really, you have to plan those 20 meter ship moves pretty accurately. Otherwise we're too far away or too close to the cliff. And you don't get to see that right away. You have to wait. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, like the other night, it can be quite uh, exciting when you make a move and you are hoping that you're in the optimal range. And you're when we get less than 10 meters from the cliff, it it gets concerning up here because uh, Atlanta can easily move in a 10 meter footprint at that depth, depending on the current. And then also depending on the weather, what the, um, uh, what the, what we call the DP footprint or how accurate the vessel's able to hold position. So in calm weather, that might be a couple meter circle. In uh, rougher seas, that can be, you know, five or ten meters. Thank you. Then there's just like the drag on the cable and the vehicle itself. And yeah. It's significant, the drag on the 6.8, if you think about that. Yeah. It's like a, if you do the math, the, you know. that's what I was just kind of doing. The cross section is 0.68 inches, right? And then yeah. you know that you've got 2,000 meters or 2,500 meters. So, like, so what's the total area? <laughs> huge. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, if you picture that winch, the winch is what two and a half meters wide and two and a half meters diameter. So. If you picture that as a cylinder and then laid it flat like a piece of plywood, it would probably be, I don't know, several pieces of 4x8 plywood for every Can we stick in the in one measure of units here? Units of measure, either we're doing things in metric or we're doing <laughs> things in imperial, but can we start Sorry. crossing the street? We do both on this vessel. It drives me crazy. It drives us nuts. <laughs> Like if we're descending, eight. if we're descending at half a meter a second and the vessel's moving at, at half a meter a, knot, a second, yeah. it's really easy to figure out. Okay, I'm descending this much. I'm moving this much. I'm going to be at the bottom at this time. Right. But that's not the way we did it. No. We, so Paul sitting here with his calculator, going, "Okay, inches point six eight, but meters. Yeah. How many meters at a?" <laughs> so it's uh, sixty eight hundred uh, square inches. So, if anyone wants to. We're real numbers. <laughs> <laughs> how many Mini Coopers, though? <laughs> yeah, how many Mini Coopers is that? <clears throat> I was going to convert it into, like, sheets of plywood. Six, well, 68, <laughs> would you say 6,800 square inches? Yeah. So, a sheet of plywood's, uh, what's, four by six eight. times 48? Four by eight. So, whatever the, the sum of that, or the product of six times 48 is, divide, it, divide that into your 9,600. Oh yeah, or plywood and a half, approximately. Is that it? More than that. Yeah, I might have I might have lost a number somewhere. I think it, I think your plywood conversion is yeah missing a decimal there. Can can yeah. somebody write a program <laughs> for this, please? I'll get a script written for cable If I was awake, I could do this. That whale shark was about the size of a Mini Cooper. <laughs> it was bigger than a Mini Cooper. Was yeah. it? Oh, yeah. I used to own a Mini Cooper, so yeah. The whale shark it was definitely was. longer. Yeah. <laughs> it was more like a Mini Cooper rally race. <laughs> or just a regular Cooper. No one. <laughs> no. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I 
I knew someone who had a Mini Cooper and they named the car Bradley. So Bradley, they had a Bradley, Bradley Cooper. Cooper. <laughs> it is funny though, most Cooper owners, most Mini Cooper owners, if you ask them, they have named their car. Yeah. It's oh. Just, it's just something about you got to name your Mini Cooper. I think that would be a great um, introduction. We can share our names. We can share our positions, and then um, I can read out the Hawaiian word. Or I know some people are working on memorizing their own. Or even if you have the paper in front of you, that's cool too. And then why don't we share um, a name of a car, or maybe just share the make and model of your car? I think that's. How about it? if you had a Mini Cooper, what would you name it? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one too. Okay, I'm gonna nominate Fiona to go first. <laughs> Wait, which one are we doing? The make of our car or what we would name our Mini Cooper? What we would name our Mini Cooper. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Fiona. I'm from the island of Saipan, CNMI, and I'm currently studying biology at the um, University of Guam, and I'm the ocean, sci ocean science intern here at Nautilus. And the name I would give my Mini Cooper... Mm. Shoot, I really thought about it. Tough one. That is a tough one. Mm. Probably Kim. Kim Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, you, Dwight. She is a Haumana slash Hu'eao. <coughs> Hi, I'm Dwight Coleman. Uh, I'm from the University of Rhode Island. I'm a marine geologist and I'm the expedition leader of Mosaic. And uh, um, I don't know, my Mini Cooper could be named uh, Spunky. <laughs> Spunky <laughs> Mini Cooper. <laughs> awesome. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Gasparo. I'm a uh, biologist. Um, and graduate student at Temple University. Um, and so in Hawaiian, my role on the ship is an ake akamai, mm -hmm. or scientist. And um, if I had a mini Cooper, it would be Trooper the Cooper. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Awesome. And um, my name is uh, Malanai Kane Kuehiwi Nui. I come from Kane Hunomoku Voyaging Academy. And if I um, and I am a science communication fellow, which is a kumu ike slash mea ha'i mo'olelo. And um, if I were to have a Mini Cooper, I would have to call it Scooter. <laughs> scooter. <laughs> scooter. <coughs> Aloha mai kako. My name is Ho'oipo Burnaman, and I am the cultural liaison on this trip. Um, or the Po'e Hawaii, and I would name, Ryan kind of stole my name. I was going to name my car Koopa Troopa. <laughs> awesome. Mahalo. Front row? Yeah, I can go next. My name is Paul, and I'm one of the uh, ROV pilots, or Pailaka Mukulu U Kia Awaya. And, uh... Wow. If I had a Mini Cooper, I would name it Supa. That way it'd be a Supa Koopa. Malanai. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> mm -hmm. For those who get to like pronounce their Hawaiian name, should probably get a prize. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I see. I feel like I always bring my snacks to this. M&Ms, yeah. I always bring my M&Ms, so I always give you guys prizes, so... <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, I don't want to take away the M&Ms and give it if you can do it. <laughs> Your applause was prize enough. Yeah. Now the pressure's on. Yeah. Fiona, we have to I learn our... I should start learning <laughs> now. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Uh, anybody else from the front row ready to go? Sure. Um, Dan sitting to the right of Paul in the Hercules chair. I don't know how to say our ROV operator in Hawaiian yet. Pailaka Mokulu'u. Ah, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll have to practice that one. All We're right. attempting it online. Um, all of our vehicles are typically 
gender neutral, so if I had a Mini Cooper, I would call it the Mini. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. As opposed to the truck or the car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Katachi. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm Katachi. My position on the cruise is the navigator or Ho'okele. Mm. Um, nice. And if I had a Mini Cooper, I would name her Princess. <laughs> <laughs> what color would that be? Uh, it'd have to be like pink or something. <laughs> Do they make them like that? Or or purple. you could have like the un purple. union. There was an eggplant color, but there was never any pink. <laughs> <laughs> you could get it custom wrapped. You could. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> they have the over the top ones with the union jack on the top. Oh, yeah. 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 So you'd like rebrand the union jack in your own colors. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I guess so. Could that be a, the prize for getting the names right? Uh, we get a Mini Cooper? <laughs> Maybe I could draw one for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then put your name on it. <laughs> Cooper has an electric one out now. Yeah, mm. they have an E Cooper. Yeah, I really like to drive one. That would be a Supa. A Supa yeah. Koopa. It would be a Supa Koopa. Boogie, woogie, woogie. Yeah. All right, I'm Jeff, the video guy, and I actually, until February 14th of 2020, because I remember the day, owned a Mini Cooper. So my Cooper was Azzurro, because we went through this Italian phase, and it was blue, and it had bonnet stripes on it, and so my wife and I decided to call it Azzurro, the Cooper. <laughs> um, so if I got another one, I don't know what I'd name it. Um, and I do want another one. I, I will say they are a blast. It's basically a legal go-kart. <laughs> <laughs> You're low to the ground and they got great handling and <laughs> it's really easy to scare people in them. So. Mm. But I think I want a red one. Mm. I'd want a red one next time. Maybe call it Chili Cooper. <laughs> Clifford. <laughs> Clifford the big red. Yeah. <laughs> Clifford the little red Cooper. <laughs> Clifford the little red Cooper. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. And Jeff is a Kanaka Paivikyo. Alrighty. Yeah, if we um, if we were able to get good GoPro shots of the whale shark, we would probably post it up on the website under highlights. Yeah? Yeah. Raja. Uh, I imagine Steve has got some video by now. Mm-hmm. It's interesting the whale shark was circling the vessel for so long. I wonder if the vessel is... Uh, sheltering the whatever it's uh, filter feeding on and it was mm. just kind of doing circles in the yeah. extra snack. Could be. Yeah, so... Kind of like nesting with the devil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a great that movie. Was awesome. That was a great movie. That was. Good job, Steve. Um, so, for those of you listening in and wondering about... Um, Nesting with the Devil, is that what the name was? Yeah. Um, one of our um, Kanaka Paivikyo, or video engineers on um, <clears throat> on this expedition, um, on this cruise, he he shared with us his um, master's movie that he yeah. created, a little short film. And he said you could find it if you Googled it online. Um, it's on Vimeo somewhere. Um, nesting with the devil mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great short film i i loved it yeah really cool story about herons and eagles mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i don't want to say no more because then we're just giving it away yeah yeah herons and eagles well you could say some of the storyline ah. i had no idea what it was about till we started watching it i don't know how to share without saying the whole story <laughs> well it's about uh Blue herons and bald eagles. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Um, 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 uh. It's interesting that it was filmed there in uh, in BC in Vancouver. We have uh, 
quite a few of the blue herons around uh, my neck of the woods. Yeah, all up and down the Pacific Northwest. Valley. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to remember the Hawaiian name for. Oh, cool. Yeah, we have a native one, but it's much smaller than those in the film. Yeah. Aku'u are herons. Yeah. And, um, Little ones. Yep. They do eat the same way, though. The way on the movie, they're eating the same way that ours wants to. Yeah. Yeah, so those, for those of you who are watching, um, you guys can just um, keep in mind we are having some difficulty with the satellite feed and um, our videos tend to be there or not there sometimes. So thank you guys so much for just being patient and um, watching where you can and continuing to join us on this journey. Um, it is, we, we are constantly trying to fix it, so I don't, I can't really give uh, uh, a definite time on when it'll be back up. But, um, yeah. Nesting with the Devil was the winner of Nature Track Film Festival. Really? Um, audience favorite, 2018. Steve didn't share that. It's so modest. I know. How was everyone's little bit of a rest day yesterday? That was awesome. I have a hard time sleeping longer than six hours. So. I'm right there behind you. It's like there, there's a certain point at, in my sleep where I'm like, I've slept too long. I, I feel like I need to do. I need to be on watch right now. You know, scurry out of my bed, looking around, and like, wait, never mind. I just have to talk to a bunch of students <laughs> online right now. We have a. Uh, Brand new mattresses from last year on the vessel, but they still don't compare to the king size memory foam bed at home. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Let's see who's tuning in with us. We, on my feed, I see here um, we have. The USA, good morning to everybody from Hawaii, from Papahana, Mokoke Marine National Monument. Aloha to United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Germany, Finland, uh, the Netherlands, Sweden, Portugal, Puerto Rico, Poland, Ireland. Uh, I don't know how to say this, this one here. I'm, I'm going to let someone who knows more <laughs> try and say that <laughs> word, hopefully. Maybe Jeff, do you know how to say that word? Okay. Do I confess, I don't even, I, I'm pretty good at world geography, but I have no clue. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try, and I'm so sorry if I say it incorrectly. Um, Guernsey. Gwent, Gwent, G U. E R N S E Y. I'm going to Google how to say that after. Um, Belgium, Australia, and uh, Hawaii. Mahalo for joining us on our descent to the ocean floor as we make our way to um, Argonaut Seamount. 20 minutes to go. 20 more minutes to go. Did we ever work out who? Uh Gets the DSC set up and going. It's uh, turned on and ready for action, but it needs some love back there. I, I do not know what a DSC is. 
Uh, that sorry, the digital stills camera. Mm. I don't know if we were able to. Ah, thank you, Guernsey, in the UK. Oh, you got it. I'm I'm just reading it on Wiki now, so learning something new every day. Totally. Do you have a line to the data lab there, Katachi? Can you ping the data lab and ask if uh, someone's down there doing the DSC? Data lab, this is Nev. I did uh, drop a decimal place. It was 14 and a half sheets of plywood. That sounds more like it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm feeling much better. <laughs> It's a lot of plywood to drag around behind the boat. Yeah. Hmm. Here's a good question. Um, How many square feet is that? Well, four times eight times Total, uh, this is now. 14 and a half. <laughs> yeah. Enough to do a calculator for that. Hmm. No one on. I could try the lounge. Yeah, sure. Lounge, this is Nev. Four sixty four square feet. Four hundred sixty four square feet. What did you what did you want to ask? Um a DSC? Yeah, someone uh someone is responsible for getting the digital stills cam set up. And it's nice to have it running when we hit the seabed. I uh, was just wondering if Rennie or um, Justin are nearby. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Do we ever see anything on the way up or way down? We, we see a lot of um, sea snow that we're seeing here, a bunch of krill, some... Um, do you want to share? And I know there was one really awesome one. Um, they saw a whale one time, and that's definitely on the highlight on um, highlighted on the website. Squid. Squid every once in a while. Squid every once in a while. A little bit of movement up here as we're trying to figure out some things.
So my napkin math gets us about 100 pounds of like horizontal drag force on just the 6.8. Napkin math. I have a little notebook here if you want a little bit more than a napkin. No, it's okay. <laughs> but, uh, at some point, you know, you're making estimates about the drag coefficient and about the flow rate and whatever, so. Many great things have been designed on, on napkins, so. And um, what is that thing called? The oil? The oil napkin? Mm -hmm. What's the name of that one? Oil. Me too. It's inside the ROV shop, that oh. big roll of... Oh, the absorbent? Oh, man. Oil absorber. Yeah, the absorbent. Uh. I saw I saw the ROV guys and the Drawn engineers on drawing on that the okay. other day. I'm like, perfect. Napkin cat. Yeah. Definitely. I have these little spurts of amazing questions in my brain and then like it escapes my brain as soon as the air opens up for us to no, talk okay. story. I guess the other thing to think about though is even if the drag force is only like 100 or 200 pounds, it's got a huge moment arm because it's acting, you know, yeah. So it's a ton of torque. Yeah, serious amount of torque, right? So yeah. that's, that's what we figured, a ton? No, no, so it's, I mean, about 450 newtons is my, like, approximate okay. horizontal, you know, drag force. But then if you take that at the center of a, you know, 2,500-meter dive, that's uh, 1,250 meters. Right. So the, I mean, the torque of that is crazy. I mean, it's a flexible cable-ish. Um, Ish, yeah. We're, uh, we're quickly leaving the, the realm of pap napkin math and need someone to do some multi-physics simulation here. <laughs> so if anyone online is bored or wants a, you know, school project, please show your work. <laughs> one of uh, one of my associates has his master's degree in uh, exactly that. Yeah. Yeah, subsea cable dynamics. So... I'm about to now. Now you're gonna have to like help me come and translate these math equations that are gonna be rolling into. No, no, no. This is the point at which we're asking the internet, you know, for their contributions. <laughs> we've we've <laughs> given you the data. Now it's your turn to help us. Beautiful. Do we have any board games on the ship? I, I feel like yes and and no. Actually, cribbage. Board games? Yeah. Yeah, there's some down the Chris um, had a game he brought that was like a Jack the Ripper themed like murder mystery. Whoa. Where you, you are like going all throughout London trying to solve, trying Whoa. to find Jack the Ripper and one of the players is Jack the Ripper. Amazing. He showed us the rules one day, but we never actually played it after that. So maybe on the transit home. Maybe on the transit because it's a three day transit back home. Amazing. I feel like the official game of the ship is cribbage. Mm -hmm. There's a tournament yeah. going on right now. And there's a prize now. And there's a prize. There's a prize for whoever wins the cribbage tournament. Mm -hmm. We should cards start playing nice cards again. Cards one small deck of cards and you have about as many games as you could ever want to play. Yeah. We were playing hearts and then everyone kind of quit once Annabelle shot the moon. Oh, I like hearts. I'd be up for hearts. I've never heard of this I'd game. I'd be up for a good game of hold'em. Hold'em tournament. And for that too. Yeah. I don't have any poker chips, so I keep I thinking watched, about bringing a set. I watched way, it's like watching paint dry. Well, uh, just like gamble our clean socks or something, something <laughs> else <laughs> valuable. Got plenty of peanuts. <laughs> Good bet shifts, I guess. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, that, yeah. What's that? As it, Katachi's right, that'd be fun. 
All, right, bet. Bet. all in, shifts. all in for your, yeah, you take my midnight shift. <laughs> 24 hour shift. The loser is just <laughs> operating <laughs> nonstop. The, the worst poker player on the boat all of a sudden is working 36 hours straight. <laughs> in every position. <laughs> I'm convinced Cribbage is like just a front for uh, evaluating who who can be an ROV pilot and who can't. Mm. Oh, now I really want to play. <laughs> mm. How did you guys get so good at math? Like, I, I want to know your secret. <laughs> I need to get better at my math skills. They're very... So on one hand, I mean, for me, it was just um, as soon as I got into like engineering, there was math in every single class that I took. Um, and I'm not necessarily someone who just loves math for math's sake. Like it really helps for me having problems be applied, having like, um, and I also really prefer kind of open-ended questions where like, you're not sure exactly what equation or method you're going to need to solve that. And so you really have to try to connect the dots on your own about what, because math is really like a toolbox. And um, knowing, I mean, which tool to grab out of the toolbox for a real problem is that often the funnest part. Um, so I think just doing a lot of it and finding a way to make it enjoyable for yourself um, to connect it to something that each person is passionate about. You know, it can be statistics for, you know, uh, deep sea coral modeling or, um, you know, yeah, calculating drag forces on a 6A cable, but finding something that, that makes it fun and engaging mm -hmm. is probably the best way to make it learn, to help you learn, because then it doesn't feel like work. Thank you. I've got some ideas now on how to spruce up my math skills. So ice cream didn't make it onto the ship and that's why we are trying our best to not talk about it. <laughs> However, there was some Handmade ice cream that was brought out for a for a birthday boy on board. Nice little surprise. How did you like that as a gift, Dad? That yeah, was the best surprise ever. Awesome. <laughs> I was not expecting to have ice cream hand delivered at the end of watch. It was pretty cool. Definitely. Oh, I, I ate it too fast and gave me a tummy. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, very rich. The richest ice cream I've ever had. It's basically uh, mason jar ice cream, so we make it with um, heavy whipping cream and sugar and vanilla extract. Add lots of love and then stick it in the freezer for a couple hours. Do we have any fun ways to pass the time that we can use in a day-to-day -day life? Look outside and enjoy the world. There's so much things to see, I feel. Do you want me to slow down, Ben? No. Nope. I'll actually speed up three meters a minute if you want. Trying to balance the delta here, and I'm mm. failing horribly. Uh, when the weather's nice, we go out on um, to the monkey deck, get some sun. A lot of people work out outside too. It seems like a really good time. Trying to balance the uh, forward suit. I, mm. I give too much it actually pulls Atalanta, see how far we yeah. drag it. And then when we get to the bottom, we swing backwards for quite a while, so which is annoying. So. Do you want to keep Argus centered, or you don't really care? 
Uh, yeah, it's nice to have the Argus centered. Is it important to know where the ship is? <coughs> uh, yeah, it's nice when we can see the ship there because if it starts to take a holiday, DP holiday, we catch it because you see the the track line drifting off. Yep. But it's not... The zoom thing here is weird. If you zoom out and then slowly go in, it'll give you the 20 meter and you can... But if you go in and then back out, you get 20, but it's not there. Yeah, there's That's like two two increments of 20. Yeah, I think there's like three. Three. Uh, I'm uh, dragging out Atlanta at the moment a bit. Ryan, do you mind going over um, some of the scientific names of the organisms that we see a lot of and then their common names? Like is a hemichorallium a... Sure. Um, hemichorallium, hmm, I'm not sure if hemichorallium has a common name, but it's the big bright pink uh, corallid type. Mm -hmm. of, that's the type of coral it is. Um, we've seen a ton of those throughout um, pretty much, I think, Almost every dive we've seen hemichorallium. Um, other common organisms, um, coral-wise, we see a lot of paragorgia or bubblegum coral. Um, and those can look a lot like hemichorallium, uh, but you can see when the current's going that their, their branches move a little bit. And when their polyps are retracted, they really do look like bubblegum stuck to a branch. Um, mm. So that's where they get their common name from. Let's see. We s um, Bolasoma. Bolasoma is a stalked glass sponge that we're seeing a lot of. I'm not sure they have a common name. Um, we're also seeing um, a lot of polyopagon glass sponges. They sort of look like a, a satellite dish. Poly... Polyopagon. Opagon. So we've been seeing them more as we've gone further south throughout the expedition. So. Um, Hopefully we'll see some of those today. So we're sort of affectionately calling them the satellite dish sponge, although it's not an official common name, I don't think. It can be the official common name on this ship. Sure. Because I, I feel like I know, I, I'm imagining it in my brain now, yeah. especially because I um, I went through a bunch of the highlighted, I, I went and highlighted a bunch of pictures last night. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of uh, bamboo corals as well. That's sort of just the common name for the whole group. Uh, Corado acididae. Cor cor coral acididae? Yeah. Um, here, I could show you the name. I need to get to this that you're showing me. Um. Wow. File on file on file. So that's the full. Mm. Caratocididae. Yeah, Caratoacididae. Carato. I'm not sure if I'm even pronouncing that right. I've only seen it in like text mostly. I, one of those things you never say out loud. But I wonder what is this from the Latin? Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then th what was the? And then we see a lot of like fan corals, which are uh, type of octocorals. They're in the primnoid family. Primarily, although we see other types of fans too. Chonacops, yes, all. Chonacops. We fan saw. Favorite. We've seen about two since. Yeah, we saw two or three chonacops. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. I don't know. They ha they're they're a type of anglerfish. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to give them a common name. Grumpy fish. Grumpy Ang fish. Angl Anglerfish is the common name, yeah? Yeah, that's the group it's in. I wonder where that came from. <laughs> um, they're those fish that they tend to have those really long lures on their forehead. Mm. Um, whereas Chonacops has a pretty reduced one. But Pac 
Mackman ghost. That's that's another way to maybe <laughs> Roger, Roger. Hmm. Okay. What are some other ones? Um those are the main ones we've been seeing, yeah? Uh yeah. Let me think. I can't wait till we get that video of the headless chicken up. Yeah. So that was a type of sea cucumber. Sea cu a swimming cu sea cucumber. Mm -hmm. um, if you ask, you may receive. And that's exactly what happened on our watch. Yeah, that was cool. And then I know we, I know there's some of us that's been asking for sharks and some of us asking for whales. And we got... <laughs> yes, how about got, that? <laughs> we, we got exactly that today. Twofer. Um, we've seen a lot of squat lobsters, the, mm. the sort of crab associates that we see on the corals. So there's a few different kinds of squat lobsters. That's sort of just uh, another broad, common name. Beautiful. The zoanthids. Yep. Those are the... What are those? How do you explain what that is? Because it's found directly on the rock usually. Mm -hmm. And some of them kind of populate dead coral, yeah? Yeah, we saw them on a few um, dead corals and on dead sponges, I believe. We've seen some of them. Um, so they're a type of hexacorals. So there are octocorals yeah. and hexacorals. Um, octocorals have the sort of eight tentacles um, coming off of each polyp. And then hexacorals are sort of have symmetry that's more six-way rather mm. than eight-way. Hectocorals. That's what you said? Hexa. Hexa. And I'm the black corals we see, this altitude and the stony it corals reading, are also right? hexacorals. What's that? Mm. I'm assuming it just says that until it yeah. finds a reading. <laughs> It'll be all over the place. This dive starts at yeah. 2,300 um, oh, meters. Yes. Yeah? This one here. We uh, are about 100 meters to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, can't forget the Chrysogorgias, too. Mm -hmm. Chrysogorgia mm -hmm. and um, the crinoids. Crinoids, yeah. Feather stars. And all our stars, our stars, too. Yeah, lots of different stars. Biscuit stars, slime stars. Shooting stars. Bazingid. I have seen some shooting stars on board. Have you seen shooting stars? Just last night, nice. I was enjoying some shooting stars on the Monkey Island. It was a beautiful, clear night for the first time in, in a couple of days. So uh, what else? other really common corals, we've seen that purple octocoral Victor Gorgia. We've seen mm. that quite a bit. Um, a lot of... So is this now that you've stopped driving so far? Iridogorgia, which is that sort of spirally. Mm. Uh, yeah, Gorgia. the bottom current has us now. So looks like a current coming down the hill. Iridogorgia. I know when we were talking about our personal coral gardens that I definitely wanted a Ritigorgia in it. Me too. Metallogorgia too yep. is another fun one. Say again? Metallogorgia. Metallogorgia. Same group, but uh, different, different species. Is that what you would have in your coral garden? No. Oh yeah. No, it's just not getting a steady altitude. Herx just now picking up altitude at 100 meters. So now Argus Argus comes down another 20, it'll start stabilizing in the you high okay? 90s there. No, there's an altimeter on uh, Argus, but it's got a narrow like a 10 degree beam, but the altimeter on Herc is from the DVL, so it's got the four beams, so it's a little more stable. I kind of think we should be like filtering the Argus altitude because it just jumps around quite a lot, even when we are um, like not that far off the bottom. Yeah, that's why people like the sub bottom profiler, but it's you know, Herx below it, so that's the one I'm going by. Yeah, and the other telltale is you get green DBO mm. when you get all four beams, so also keep an eye for 
that one as soon as it turns green then I start paying attention but also we're starting to get some uh, returns on the Argus sonar which tells me it's quite steep here because we're getting returns and you're still 80 meters off the bottom right? yeah so I'll start looking at that and that'll tell me which way where we need to have Herc. So you're looking north, so uphill, the immediate uphill is going to be to our east. No, I talked to, I saw Diane on the way by, she's going to go check it. It's got a little quirk where if you start the intervalometer, with the dialog box in front of the camera, you then can't move it after you start it. But she's uh, distracted by whale shark footage. Steve's got his laptop there on the uh, open in the galley, going through the GoPro footage. Did they get some good ones? Uh, I wouldn't say good, but they got enough some video to pull some decent still images up. Nice. I should have taken them little better time to set up the, the pole. it's hard with the pole because you don't know you don't have any feedback of what you're looking at so you're guessing yeah. I'm gonna come start coming back and come underneath you if you want to put your camera straight down straight down yeah yep can you use your right mouse button there too if you want that's good I'm left-handed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we're left-handed. Yeah. Um, you ready for Argus? And ROV Monitor 1. What's that? You want Argus and ROV Monitor 1? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks. And we have reached the bottom of the ocean. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, it's quite the hill here on the east side. It's nice to come down looking up the hill, so I've adjusted the Herx heading to pick up the sonar image there. Okay, you can uh, come all stop there for a minute if you want. What can we see? A little, a little we hunt can, around. Uh, we're gonna go north, aren't we, Katachi? Is that right? That's right. I'm gonna just hang out here for a little bit while I um, fix the DVL. Yeah, Raj, we got all our bottom stuff. You can uh, get them an impound if you want, Paul. We'll do the white balance. Sounds good. dives that it's harder to turn Atalanta, I think. Yeah. Already seeing quite a few corals and some sponges on this slope. Welcome sight to see it. You first land. Definitely. You're good there. Okay. I'm just floating up a bit. Lasers off the white balance. Uh, I don't know if it matters. Uh, he'll be zoomed in so far. I know you really don't see him, but porch lights off too. Porch lights are off. Thank you. Currently.
it not wanting to come around, is it? Yeah, it's uh, full there thrust it right now. I found if I click your auto head on and off, I'm happy to keep it on yeah. better. CM. Yeah, I tried that trick once already. It, I think it's just got some current. Yeah. What is Atalanta's heading reference? Is that, um, th it's not a gyro. No, it's a micro strain. Uh. It's a MEMS, it's a MEMS gyro. Okay. Nice little devices, they're 1,500 bucks. Not bad. But now uh, owned by Parker. Does it have to be calibrated? frequently uh no because it's a it, no. it has to be a, it's you, not magnetic well yeah it is so it there's is. but there's well it has a, a magnetometer in it so it has a ah, there's three sensors in it as a magnetometer accelerometer and a gyroscope gyro cool There is, uh, you can do the offsets and put in a calibration file in, in it. Uh, and I don't know if that was initially done during the setup or not. I have one that we took out of Argus because it doesn't work inside the bottle because the bottles uh, yeah. have some, uh, I think they're 316 or something. Or, or something. It looks pretty accurate the way it's lined up on... Uh ROV nav, nav G here. Yeah, it's typically been pretty good. It's about 30 degrees off when it's sitting on the deck huh. because of the metal of the deck yeah. of the ship. But I've been playing around with the one we took out of uh, Argus with uh, trying to get a uh, ROS node working with the model, so we have a real-time model of Hercules. Yep. Wait, are we uh, ready to do the white balance? Jeff's over there poking. I'm ready. Just waiting for you guys to Oh, well, I thought you were looking at your fancy monitor. I was for a second, but no, anytime you guys are ready. Dan, it doesn't get affected when it's on Atalanta, though. Isn't that, you know, a lot of steel there, too? Uh, it's in a different... Uh, Enclosure on Atalanta. Gotcha. It's in that specialized enclosure. Too. Can you bring the arm up just a minute? Yep. Ah, oh, that's perfect right there. All right. Go on blind for a second. Roger. All right. How's the current looking? It's ripping. What's our uh, course to the first waypoint? Our bearing? Due north. Due north, right. No. But should I call that in when the, like, how's the water, how are you being moved underwater? Uh, everything's kind of static at the moment, so okay. we should just call in and move to the north when we're ready to go here. Cool. Imagine they want to look around there. Cool. All right, I'm good, thank you. Stow this thing? Yeah, Raj. Uh, if you're listening, thank you, Diane. Much better. She fixed the... Uh, she fixed the DSC so I can see it up there out of the corner of our eye. All right, we all ready? I'm good. 
Tobac, gonna call in the first ship move. Uh, let me let me mosey out a little bit. We're just talking back here about whether to grab a sample here at our deepest depth. Gotcha. Uh, I think we'll be, I think I'd like to get one for Val. Copy um, that. So let's keep keep an eye out uh, based on Val's uh, discussion yesterday with us all. We're looking for a uncooked potato. Uncooked <laughs> potato, Roger. <laughs> Look to be a lot of loose rocks over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plethora of choices. Yeah, I think any of these are uh, can good candidates, honestly. Uh, angular looking, blocky, with some girth to it. We want the like, kind of triangle ish one, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to come back on with the arm then. Roger. This one might be a yeah. candidate. Uh, it looks like an uncooked potato. <laughs> as best we can tell, it's really Does hard. Does cooked refer to color change? No, it refers to, uh, so you're looking at a bunch of potatoes, right? Yeah. Right. How do you tell the difference between one that's cooked and not cooked? So it refers to the inside, so if the rock's altered, but how like can you can't see it, so it's, I know. it's basically an old rock that's altered. Yeah, that was the, that <laughs> was the challenge. Do we like this one? I yeah, I like I, it. Yeah, why not? How's your grip there? Back on with the lasers. Yeah, just confirming. Are we at sample one two one? Yeah. Thank you. There are the lasers. Can we zoom in a little bit, Jeff? Um, so we're collecting this rock for Val, who is a geologist who is trying Actually, to... Actually, it looks much more like a crust to me now. Yeah, now that we see the bottom side of it. Yeah. Really black. Mm -hmm. Do we want to put this one back? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll put it back where you got it. Yep. Is the, is the coral attached to that one? Zoom in there, Jeff. No. Do we want to go for this big one in front? Is that um, too big? It looks sort of attached over it's here. Got the right it? Uh, touch it once with your jaw. It's real easy. It's, that is pretty large, isn't it? Yep. Okay. I think that seems kind of attached. Yeah. Yep. Well, let's zoom out and uh, look around a little more. What a, is that like one that's square looking? That one that's kind of centered lower? Some uh, likely Down. victims up oh. above the sponge there. Yeah, maybe some of these. Yeah. Can we uh, zoom in a little bit? Touch the one to the right, up, just up and to the right. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I like that one. Looks uh, more cantaloupe sized. It's a little lobster hanging out over there, too. Got to bump right a little bit. Are you okay? All right, you could zoom up just a hair. Yeah, let me see where I'm at again. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, go wide there, watch Jeff. Pull wide. Who's it? Yep. There's the other laser back over there. Yeah. yeah All right, can we zoom in? Hide on the arm there, around the fingers. For those of you who are wondering, the distance between the two lasers are uh, 10 centimeters. This looks like a good sample to me. Great. Thank you. Where is uh, this one going? Uh, hey. Oh, right. You already take your box out. <laughs> Push in there if you want to. Oh my god. Someone is typing on my screen. I wonder who it is. Is that you, God? <laughs> there you go, falls in there. Maybe it's Megan. Beautiful close up of this coral. Yeah, really nice look at the polyps there. Beautiful bamboo coral. Would this be like an octocoral and all their tentacles are closed right now? Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Slam nice dunk. Oh. Watch out for that box. Snaggle teeth. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm uh, kind of, sorry. Kind of like swing. backed in on all the joints. Yeah, if you swing left, you'll come out of there. Sold what you got, I'll get the box out of here. Was that A? Yeah. Okay. It was A, yeah. Okay, that should be good. We're going to be a little conservative on our um, Niskin sampling this dive. Uh, you probably saw that note. Yeah. We'll get them with Beth's rocks and then. Uh, any like amazing coral gardens and then one more at the end probably. Okay, Jeff, you wanna do a slow zoom out? I might stow the arm after you move back a little bit just because yeah, I know right. it was real close on the right. a variety of different corals here, huh? Yeah, we're seeing primnoids, chrysogorgids, hemichorallium, bamboos, both fan and unbranched. Okay, should have room now. Mushroom coral center screen there. Yeah, lots of different corals. All right, I think we can call the ship move now if you haven't already. Roger. British, this is Neff. Uh, let's go 20 meters north, please. Did you zero the 6-8 when we came down? Uh, no, but I think it was good. Gosh. Atalanta's not wanting to cooperate. The thrusters are on, right? Oh. <laughs> you got it? Yep. Oh, sorry, I'm blowing past you. I'm gonna I'm gonna come up the hill and be on your uh northeast side. 
should uh, blow the tether back behind us so you can get those low deltas without. Yeah, there's a little breeze there. So is this um, seamount running from north to south? Yep. Awesome. At least this ridge is, yeah. You know it's singing when the corals are strumming. Yeah. Maybe Ryan, do you mind talking about what we do with the samples? Um, yeah, so typically we preserve them um, in ethanol so that they can be brought back to the lab and we can look at a sponge. Get an idea, uh, get a DNA sample from them. Um, some sponges, though we preserve dry so that they sort of maintain their shape and we can get a look at the, the glass or the spicules that make up their skeleton. Getting a nice close up on this okay. glass sponge Should've here. Interesting. In Hawaiian, sponge is huakai. Huakai. I'm going to repeat all the Hawaiian words, and you can repeat all the scientific names. Uh, so down. Great plan. They're still having some issues with the video feed on shore, so uh, unfortunately. Come on. Uh, but Chris Kelly's with us and he's Get helping the us. Animal there. Chris says, this is a weird one. <laughs> I agree. I didn't even venture a guess at this one. <laughs> Something all, sort of similar looking off to the side. Try for a little better angle here. against the hill to hold the position in there. It's okay. We may be interested in collecting it. Uh, can we um, stop the ship? Right. Ship is if stopped. You need, unless you don't need to. Ship is uh, finished its move ready. Can we do a, a, a snip and slurp? Likely going to be brittle. Like probably to slurp. Sure. Try it, yeah. Yeah, you want to grab the, grab the slurp up? Yep.
lift up. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, hold that. Holding. Okay, Are we, uh, you can uh, position how you want now. Seven. All right, are we uh, ready to sample? Yeah. Oh. You're behind it a little. <coughs> Seeing bubble. Yeah. I'm just not sure how to actually get my. Uh, Rotate your wrist to the left. A little. There you go. What I want. is up against the wall. Yep. Beautiful. Let me come down and get the pieces that are yeah. Small piece in there. Good, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sponge. Great sample. You want to zoom in there, Jeff? Do you want me to uh, turn off the... Yeah, you can turn it off. I should be good to Great, nice job, do. nice sample. That's an Eskin 7? I mean, Eskin 7, Slurp 7? Slurp yeah. 7, yeah. yes. Okay. And that was a sample for our um, scientists ashore who have made a wish list for us here. Yeah. Awesome. This Thank was just you. a surprise, though. I don't know if this was on the list. This is just a. Okay. If you uh, okay. have come on, we'll see something cool. Yep. Can, uh, we can kick the ship into gear. Start exploring. exploring. Bridge. This Up is slope. the. Let's go 40 meters north, please. We are expecting to transit 2.5 kilometers over this dive. And we're starting at depth of 2,300 meters and working our way up to, hmm, I'm trying to find it. I think uh, 1960, 1950. Awesome. Yeah, and so for those of you who were here when we saw the whale shark, I believe it's up on our um, Instagram and Facebook, perhaps, a little snapshot of what we were able to see. Already? Wow. I think so. Megan no did a good job. No time wasted. At, yeah. Uh, 
So uh, one other thing I noticed is that it did look like some small pieces of sponge were in jars like six and five. I don't know if those are from the last dive or if that's anything you guys or you all need to note in the back row, but just um. Yeah, I noticed that too. I was wondering if we cross-contaminated things a little bit or yeah. it's just other remnants. I think they might have, I, I don't know, but they might not have been this sponge. It could have just been remnants from the last dive if they, um, like if we didn't, uh, could be, yeah. Yeah. Push it there, Jeff. Well, when we go to one of the other jars for the next sample, we'll make a note of what's already in there. Cool. So this looks like star of happy, a type of black coral. Push it a bit more if you want. And it did look like the early jars, like one, two, and three, were pretty clear. So if there's anything that needs no, you know, other material, those might be the best bets. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Good idea. That good? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay, go away. Thank you. about the much. Okay, about what? Can you look uh, to north, Paul? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll, I'll probably say it a couple of times throughout the dive, but uh, just because there's comments rolling in, but we um, we are still trying to fix the the feeds, and it's just something in the air right now that's kind of out of our control. So thank you for hanging in there with us. Um, this is a volcanic formation that we are traversing today. Um, this is a uh, Argonaut Seamount. Um, there's another sponge there. And uh, is it, there was a question about um, if we eat a lot of fish on these missions, and our our food has no limit. There's we eat all kinds of food every day. We have vegetarian options, pescatarian options, meatarian options. <laughs> <laughs> they they accommodate for all of us. Yeah. Um, so this is one of those polyopagon sponges? Polyopagon. Poly we're starting to see as we move south in this expedition. I kind of made myself like a score sheet. So I've like named a bunch of the things that we've been seeing regularly. And every time I see it, you get a point. Yeah. So. Polyopagon gets a point right now. Oh, we should make a uh, like a bingo sheet for anyone watching at home. Mm. That's a great idea. That'll be a good deliverable kind of idea to make. I received a message that there's a teacher at um, at a school right now in Hawaii. That's um that on Oahu and while they're in class I think it's probably an art class Hana no Eo, um, to pass the time they're gonna tune in and watch as we explore this That's scene amazing. out here awesome welcome yeah I think their class is let me find that comment back to the stole an anemone down there see an enemy Another black hole to the right, maybe a pathy pathies. There we go. Sent in by Kumumalia and uh, Pu'uru Olona. Happy Earth Day. The kids wish you wish you wish us uh, good luck and happy Earth Day. Thank you. Happy Earth Day to everyone listening. Mm-hmm. Bridge, this is Nav. How does the sponge anchor it to itself to a rock? 
Um, different sponges uh, do it in different ways. Another 40 meters north, please. Some sponges will actually cement themselves to a rock, kind of like corals do, um, while other sponges are really just sort of gripping on or grappling onto rocks and sort of just hanging on there. Very cool. I think this is such a nice view of Atalanta looking at Ar at Hercules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeff and I were just each playing around with the lights a little bit too. Mm. I control the iris, Paul controls the lights, we try and get a pretty picture. These look like manganese nodules, but I'm not quite sure. Nope. Mixed in with a lot of other rocks. Nope, that was by accident, never mind. Do you want a uh, close-up of them? Yeah, take a zoom. Yeah, you can zoom in there, Jeff. See what I'll pop once to zoom in on it. Definitely manganese coated rocks. Manganese. Probably nodules. Coated rocks. Could do a full zoom that once. Just an idea of the I see towers in being close. Octocoral, maybe? Oh, oh and then well, that little guys. clear sea anemone. Are those cup corals that are way off in the corner? Oh. Sorry, I was just looking around at the different rocks there. Oh, that's okay. 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 That's good. Thanks. DSC back up there for me. Thank you. Hello from the STEM educators at the Pacific Fleet Submarine Museum Pearl Harbor Memorial Complex on Oahu. Um, they are super excited that they can watch all this exploration being conducted in their waters, our waters, the waters of Hawaii. That's awesome. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Have it set on every 30 seconds. You can tell when it takes a picture. Also found if you line up your camera with that camera, then you don't have to think about it so much. Mm. It's a different angle depending on the slope. Some little sponges on the seafloor there with some. What kind of corals are those? So we're seeing a bunch of chrysogorges on that rock. Uh, white coral is potentially a prunoid. I'm not positive on that one. Is that a trident coral too? Um, I think that's sort of a informal name we've been calling things. Mm. Just looks like it. That's not necessarily the name of it. It does have that sort of mm. candelabra-like morphology we've been we've been calling out. Hello from Bethel, New York. 
So we need to try to at least get to waypoint two on our watch if possible, just to stay on schedule. Roger. Are we doing 40 meter moves, are we? Yes, sir. All right. You can keep him, keep him moving. Unless Brian calls up for Making way to waypoint two. Is there a strong current? The DVL has been drifting that way. What is that way? East. Um, sorry, uh, east to west. East to west. And is that on the ocean surface or on the ocean floor? No, on the sea floor. So um, we have two ways of navigating using or positioning, localizing for Hercules. We have the USBL, which is, uh, uh, I guess a good analogy is an underwater uh, GPS kind of system. Um, Can take a partial zoom on this sponge. Roger. And it gives you pretty accurate fixes, but they're uh, discrete. Um, whereas the DVL gives you a continuous measurement of where you are, but it can become inaccurate over time. And that's why we're here. You, you are here, you folks. <laughs> Bridge, this is now. Another 40 meters north, please. This is a glass sponge that we're looking at? It is. Potentially a Fariad, not positive. Happy? Yeah, thank you. Okay, move on. Sponge right on your left coming up. Right. Heading to, towards the rock. A lot of little corals that perched up here on this boulder. Yeah. This area seems to have a lot of loose rock. Yeah, and then when you get something big like this, cover it. Yeah. Nice attachment point. We get a zoom on this white coral here. Sure, go ahead, Jeff. Not a very good angle. Yep, seeing some cup corals on there too. Yeah, a little gray in the background there. Beautiful. Nice looking bamboo coral.
Yeah, the might be the DBL struggling on all the weird rocks. I don't know. Oh yeah. Should current be affecting the DBL? No. Not that I know of. Yeah. Unless there's a lot of particles in the water, but which doesn't seem to be the uh, case. So uh, for everyone tuning in, we're here on the Argonaut Seamount, currently at about uh, almost 2,300 meters down, exploring a north to south ridge feature on this seamount, um, looking at uh, some of the geology to get an idea of the geochemistry of these rocks, maybe get an age on them uh, to understand the, the larger seamount ridge feature that we've been exploring this expedition. Um, along with looking at some of the microbial crust on some of these rocks um, and also exploring some of the biodiversity of the region to sort of get a, a good baseline of the animal communities that live on these seamounts. Um, and yeah, I think that, that basically summarizes some of the, the high-level goals of our mission here. Thank you for sharing that. Ryan, um, we're just a little over halfway our um, halfway done with our cruise, and uh, we were able to get in a lot of dives and collect a lot of samples of rocks to study the ferro manganese crust, to study um, and to figure out the date of these seamounts. Tilt up just a bit. Yeah. It's coming up. I remember Val was talking about how our, our last dive, not this one, but the one before this one. Can we get a zoom over here, please? Zoom. Yeah, let me get a little closer there. Sure. Sort of interested in some of these white fans and figuring out what they are. The one next to the uh, black coil? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Jeff, push in there. See some brittle stars wrapped around it there. Mm. Bridge, this is Dev. Another 40 meters north, please. Polyps. Not sure yet. Not sure yet. On the left is star of Hathis, the yellow coral. And then the background looks like a bamboo. I'm not positive about this white one, though. Chris Kelly, our scientist ashore, is IDing this as uh, in the genus Norella, so a type of primnoid octocoral. You can sort of see by the downward orientation of the polyps that's in that family. That's great, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. a nice close up on uh, primnoid and sea star wrapped around a uh, white coral. Oh, crinoid. Yeah. Hello, little nice. crinoid. Sathy Rometra, if I believe the name of the genus correctly. This is a very um, interesting rock feature here, very bubbly. Not quite pillow lava though, yeah? Sort of tough to tell. Could be. So, 
It's really kind of covered in a lot of rubble and sediment. <coughs> Just, you know, I changed my heading a little bit too. Yeah, Raj. <coughs> Looks like it's going to get steep here. Definitely a more gentle slope than what we've experienced on previous dives. So uh, pretty vertical at the moment. Just, it just steepened up here. Yeah, it did. Could explain why there's so many rocks and boulders that have sort of rolled down this hill. Right. Yeah, the rubble field at the bottom. Yeah. Looks like a little sponge down there at the bottom of the rock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quite a bit going on in the underhang there. Large black coral there. Two. Can we uh, slow down to point two for a while? Bridge, this is Nev. Please slow down to point two knots. Copy that. What do you say on it? Uh, it's turned down up here. Uh, he said the speed has been 0.2 knots from the beginning of the dive. Right there. That means I'm going too slow. That was an interesting looking come, sponge. Come again? Just you broke up. Looks like a sea anemone there and a sponge there. Sea anemone in Hawaiian, I think. One word was. You're right. Thank you. Okole, but I think there might okole. be another word that's okala, but <laughs> don't George quote is me always on right. that. like a foray looked like there's a little sea cave over there yeah no one's home again bumps on the rocks, those are manganese. Yeah, that's right. That's kind of a texture that's formed when uh, the rocks get coated with the ferromanganese crusts. Oh, interesting. Can we take a look at this sponge? Sure. I'll push in a bit there, Jeff. The way it sort of moved down the rock there. Yeah. Or did it move up the rock? Right, yeah. Who knows? Cannot really tell. Can you tell? No. That's good. Cool. Okay, no, no. and this is a glass sponge? Yes. Okay, I can go uh, back. Thank you. Nice close up. Bridge, this is now another 40 meters north, please. And this sponge team seems to be joining a party of, of corals here. Yeah. Corals and sponges. We got our first sea cucumber on the ledge here. Loli. Loli. Yeah. 
Do a flyby zoom on the sea cucumber. If you want. Yeah, that's good. And the mushroom coil just below that. Mushroom right, coil. Go wide again. Just up, um, came came up this cool looking shelf here. Yeah, pretty steep. Yeah, a little less rubble starting to go away a bit. Making good progress now to waypoint two. So uh, when there's a very steep cliff, we often don't have a lot of choice but to make a progress <laughs> just, quickly. Yeah, just keep going. <laughs> I'm enjoying this um, small garden that's not crazy dense and not super sparse of organisms. Really diverse though, like really a, a lot, quite a few different types of corals. Which I'm happy to see. And I say small because we've had some really big organisms the past couple of dives. Yeah. We're a little bit deeper, I think. Yeah. Are we doing eDNA on, on these on these dives? We'll do some, yep. Perhaps Dwight, you could um, could you speak um, about the significance of the split that we will that we are um, exploring? The significance of the seamount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so a little more ahead. We've been spending most of the time on uh, the yeah. left fork or the or the western fork of the Lilikalani Ridge, and now we're over on the eastern fork. Yeah, that's good. And so we're trying to study the relationship between the rocks and the lavas and the seamounts that exist on is each of these forks. On the bottom? And so the significance is that this is, um, geologically anyway, is that this is uh, um, one of the southern, one of the more southern uh, seamounts along the Lilikalani Ridge. And uh, it could be a completely separate origin or a completely different type of um, source of the volcano than what we saw along the western fork so uh, we're we won't really know the answer to that until the rocks have been processed in the lab at home and we've done some geochemical analyses and and da age dating uh, but that'll help us tell the story and sort of decipher the or, or sort of untangle the the geologic history of the two forks of this ridge and so that's the interest from a geological perspective. Um, biologically, this one's really interesting because the shape of it is much different 
and it's um, generally lower relief and, and sort of, uh, uh, you know, elongated compared to some of the other seamounts. So we're near um, Nootka and King George seamount, but the Argonaut is just to the north of those two. And um, uh, much different shape. Take a look at this coral. So we'll compare the animals that we see on this dive to King George and Nootka. Zoom in there, Jeff. And um, compare the differences. Awesome. Just Thank you. Bit more. Nice gorget, I believe. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Okay. Sort of looked a little different from afar, but that's still cool. Thank you. So. You want the ship to keep moving or hold off for a second? Let's hold off for a second and come around the rocks here. These are really, this is a really cool rock formation we're looking yeah. at here. Yeah. See how these shelves are working. I'm kind of Lots of corals on this side. Yeah. But you said the, is the current west, to, it's east to west here too, right? I think so, yeah. Ah, uh, no. It's uh, uh, west to east. West to east. Left to right? Yeah. Okay. Kind of coming down the hill at an angle. Yeah. Atlanta is not getting blown around too much. It's barely using its uh, props, so might not be as much as it was lower. Some really tall bamboo whip corals there. Quite a few chrysogorgids. Is that working? What's that? Dead sponge. Yeah, sort of interesting sheet like sponge debris. Come up, Paul, I'm gonna come under it. Big sponge off to your left. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is pretty cool big. Is that the biggest one we've seen? That's this entire cruise? That's quite large. That's yes. Wow. Up there. The size of the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. It might be bigger. Oh, cool. It looks like a clamshell. Satellite dish, yeah. <laughs> It's a little stronger here at the top of the. Yep. Let's pull left on her. Clear. Wow, this thing's massive. This is like half the size of. Those poor corals behind it just get <laughs> blocked it out. It's at least the width of the vehicle. Totally. Wow. I wonder if these corals are kind of benefiting from being next to this sponge, or maybe not so much. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. Wow. Wow. You got your submit. Yeah. That's an amazing sponge. Boy, can we identify it? <laughs> not sure. 
you have to wonder how long it took to get that big. Right. Hey, Sponge, how old are you? <laughs> if sponges could talk. Um, I'm about a wow. couple hundred <laughs> years old. Or would this be a couple thousand years old? We don't know yet how to... Is it okay to zoom in on it? Yeah, in an okay place for that? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. You can see the width is actually bigger than Argus. It Hercules. is. It's almost like Argus can drive in, Amazing. I mean, uh, Herc can drive into it. I'm glad I'm not the only one mixing up the names right now. <laughs> Beautiful. This could be the record for the, for the cruise so far in size. Mm. Wow. See the w interesting pattern of like canals and okay, yeah. different things go going on in there too. There. Oh, yeah. Currents pushing me into it. Too. Wow. Such an interesting texture too. Yeah. Were we able to identify this yet? Roger. <laughs> 